Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel while he was in exile in Babylon with many of his kinsmen, who were brought out of Jerusalem and the surrounding country by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. As a prophet, he was called to prophesy to the people of the things to come. First, the things of judgment, that the city would be destroyed, that the temple would be thrown down, and that many of the generation in exile in Babylon would not return home. For the people had long and gravely sinned against the Lord God. They had sought the idols of the hills, the false gods of the surrounding nations. They committed abominations. They oppressed the poor, the widow, and the stranger, those who were learned in the law and in the teachings of the Lord, the king, the princes, and the priests, were not doing their jobs as the shepherds of Israel. They did not warn the people, correct them, or teach them. Instead, they themselves participated in, encouraged, and led the way in these sins. The kings built altars to foreign idols. The priests erected idols within the temple of the Lord God, they practiced prostitution in the temple sanctuary. They exhorted the poor, extorted the poor and the pious, and they themselves cast the law of God and his teaching to the side and underfoot and told others to do likewise. It was for this reason that the people of Israel were driven out of their land, and the temple destroyed and the land laid waste and uninhabited for seventy years, or a week of decades, that it might have a Sabbath rest. From wickedness. Thus the people of God were scattered, they were in exile, some fled, and they were found in many nations and many peoples, not just in Babylon, but in Egypt and in the northern countries. After generations of ignoring and persecuting the prophets who warned them, even killing them for bringing a message that warned of judgment rather than promising prosperity, the people saw their sin for what it was and how grave that it was. They no longer lived in the land promised them. They broke the covenant that God had with them, and now he was doing what he said he would do after trying again and again to keep it from happening. Surely the people were devastated. They were a people cast out of their land, and in the eyes of the surrounding nations, it looked as if they had been rejected by their God. And in fact, that was the propaganda that Nebuchadnezzar was using, saying, I have thrown down their temple, I have their uh, temple instruments in my palace, their God has submitted to me. But this wasn't the case, brothers and sisters. The Lord did not abandon his people. That is why after he spoke judgment through the prophet Ezekiel, he also spoke of restoration, redemption, and hope. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and seek them out. As the shepherd seeks his flock, as he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so I will seek my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on the day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and to gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. Yes, the Lord himself would rescue his people. He cast them out. He scattered them in order to rebuke them, to chastise them, to correct them, in order that they may learn to fear him and walk in his ways. But he did this also so that he himself may rescue them and tend to them, that he himself may seek the lost, the hurt, the scattered, and bring them safely to the land which they had been cast out of a land healed from their sin that was committed upon it, a land restored. There he would tend to them and care for them as a shepherd cares for his sheep. I will seek the lost, says the Lord, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, 
and I will strengthen the weak. And those who by their false shepherding enriched themselves with the backs of the sheep, who trod them down, who pushed them aside with horn and shoulder with violence and trampled the good grass underfoot, muddying the waters, those whom the Lord here calls the fat and the strong, those who should have tended and cared for the flock, the weak and the vulnerable, but instead exploited them, of these the Lord says, the fat and the strong I will destroy. His precious sheep would no longer need to fear those in the flock that terrorized them and that led them into sin and idolatry. They would be completely destroyed, annihilated, as the verb might be translated. But those whom he would bring back, he would tend and care for lovingly. He says, I will feed them in justice. And we see this fulfilled when the Lord brought his people out of exile from Babylon and the surrounding nations. He brings them back to their own land, where they no longer went after idols, but served the Lord only out of thanks for what he has done. It really is miraculous when you read the Old Testament, especially Judges and the Kings and the Chronicles, and you see how idolatrous God's people were. Yet after the exile, when they returned home, they never again turned to idolatry, but faithfully worshipped the Lord until he sent them his Messiah to redeem them. And that is where we see how this prophecy was fulfilled in part, but not in full. This was the first fulfillment, but it was fulfilled again around 600 years later in the person and work of Jesus. This is the second and the greater fulfillment of this prophecy, for Jesus himself says, I am the good shepherd. And there's no contradiction in this, that Ezekiel has the Lord God saying, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, for in both, God is speaking. Through Ezekiel, God, the Holy Trinity, spoke. In Jesus Christ, the Son, the second person of the Holy Trinity, became incarnate, took on flesh, and became a man without losing any of his divinity or ceasing to be God. Jesus Christ, as the Son of God, says, I am the good shepherd. In essence, he is saying, I am the one who said, I, I myself, will shepherd my sheep. Behold, I am here in your midst. Thus, all that the Lord God had said through Ezekiel also applies to Jesus Christ as the good shepherd. He proves himself the good shepherd in laying down his life for the sheep in order to take it back up again that he might gather his scattered sheep together. When the hired hand sees the wolf coming, they flee, leaving the sheep. But in the face of the wolf, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He gives himself over to death to the wolves, but in killing him, they themselves are killed. Yes, sin, death, and the devil, the wolves that they are, thought that they had won when Christ was on the cross, thinking that they had put him there through all their clever work. But it was instead him laying down his life for the sheep. He did this of his own accord. No one took his life from him. He laid it down that he might take it back up again. By his death, he destroyed death, the power of sin, and the hold of the devil on the sheep. Thus, having taken back his life up in the glorious resurrection, our Lord Jesus Christ brings his sheep into his fold. He searches for his sheep and seeks them out. He rescues them from all the places where they have been scattered. No matter where one has wandered, or been scattered to, no matter how far, no matter how injured they have become along the way, he seeks the lost, he brings back the strayed, he binds up the injured, and strengthens the weak, so that there will be one flock and one shepherd. This he does through his gospel, which is read, sung, and preached here and throughout the world on Sundays, but is also shared daily by Christ's sheep so that others who are his sheep might hear and know his voice. And they will also then be brought back into the fold. Brought back into the fold so that they can feed on the good pasture, the very word of God, the scriptures, which are the spiritual food for a spiritual people made alive by the Spirit. For he works faith in us and regenerates us that we may believe in Christ, our good shepherd. As our good shepherd, he tends to us. When we sin, 
That is, when we stray from his path into ways that we think are best but are actually full of dangers and pitfalls, when we wander out of his pastures and are into pastures that are not good but instead places filled with noxious weeds which look and taste sweet but are in fact deadly poison, when we do not heed his voice and end up injuring ourselves by wandering in our own actions, he, our good shepherd, still seeks us out. He seeks for the lost where they have left his ways. He brings back the strayed and who have made their ways to bad pasture. He binds up the injured that they may find healing. He strengthens those who are weak in faith by his tender care. Sometimes it may hurt to have wounds bound, to have broken bones set, to have the rebuke of the law sound in our ears, but it's for our own good so that we may return to him and hear his words of gospel, which restore, refresh, and give hope, which show that he has not abandoned his sheep, but always seeks them out and cares for them, gathers them and tends them, forgiving the sins of those who trust in him, and he strengthens their faith, gathering us into his flock that he might care for us, watch us, and tend us that we might lie down in safety, so that we may be secure in him, who has done all of this for us and continues to care for us, that we may despair of ourselves and our own ability, knowing our propensity to become lost, and rely solely on him who makes us lie down in green pastures, who provides the food of heaven, who gives us living water that we might grow and be refreshed in the heat of the day and the weariness of the changes and chances of this life that bear down upon us, For as long as we live in this fallen creation, we're surrounded by the dangers presented by our own flesh, by the devil, and by the world. But if we remain in Christ, our good shepherd, who tends and cares for us, if we return to him in repentance when we sin, we need not be afraid. For we know that all these things which are dangers that surround us are passing away. Their time is coming to an end. For the day is coming and is surely drawing nearer every day, when Christ, our shepherd and overseer of our souls, will come again in the flesh. Then all the sheep, both the living and the dead, will hear his voice and gather to him. He will destroy the fat and the strong, those who rejected him and hated him and attacked his sheep. Then sin will be no longer, then the devil no more can vex, and death itself will be dead. There all who believe in him from the time of Adam until the time he comes again, will be gathered together, both Jew and Gentile, into one flock with one shepherd. There Christ, our Lord and God, who suffered for us, taking our sins upon himself when he laid down his life on the tree, will make us lie down in eternal safety, as he shepherds and cares for us, tends us, and is present with us forever in our midst. God grant this to us all. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.